Today, we're going to make a digital bomb of sorts. Let's take a look. Welcome back, everybody. I'm excited to get started on a new year, new semester, and get teaching computer science, programming, and a little bit of electrical engineering, embedded system stuff here and there. Today, we're going to look at a little program, very simple, that is maybe your first piece of malware. It's not all that useful, but I do find it's really helpful to make sure that you understand certain things about how computers work, how processes work, and how Fork works. And it's got a cool name. Before we dive into it, a huge thanks to all of you who support this channel on Patreon. And for those of you who aren't aware, you can get access to source code for the videos like this video through Patreon, as well as access to my monthly office hours. But enough of that, let's jump into the code. So I'm looking at a really simple program here. Some of you may have even seen this in my last video. Uh, we didn't really talk about any of this, but but you basically have a really simple Hello World style. Well, I mean, it's not even Hello World. There's not even, there's nothing in main, but let's add something to main. Maybe we can do something like, hello, now it is Hello World. And that's great. Now, today I wanna to talk about something called a fork bomb. And as I just mentioned, a fork bomb is not particularly practical. It's not something you would put in production code, but I do think it's useful for students who are learning how processes and programs and operating systems and fork you know, how all these things work together, I do think it's useful to play around with a fork bomb. Plus it's a little entertaining. You can amuse your friends. Now, if you've never seen fork before, I encourage you to check out my previous videos. I've got two particularly, I'll link down in the description. They explain all about how fork works. I'm not gonna go into all the nitty gritty details of how fork works. I mean, we'll touch a little bit on it in this video, but if this is all brand new, check out that video and then come back and this will all make a whole lot more sense. But now moving on, if we're looking at fork, we basically just think about fork really simply as a function that will clone a process. Okay, so if I do this pretty simply, we come down here and I compile it. If clearly I forgot a header file, so let's just come in here and say, where is fork? unistandard.h. If any of you are unfamiliar with how to find out, you know, sometimes students are wondering like, how do I find the header file? Man pages are a great place to look. You just come down here to the man pages. It will tell you what you need to include in order to get that function. So now that we have added it, and let's make sure we save it. Now, if we come down here, we can compile it and that's great. And now if we run example, you can see that basically this process clones itself, okay? So what a fork bomb is just actually a really simple extension of this. What we're gonna do is come down here and do something like while true fork. And we don't know what true is, so let's come down here and include standard bool.h. And now we can basically remove the hello world. Okay, so this is this is a fork bomb, that's all it is. Okay. The question really comes down to what this does. To me, that's the main value of this program. This is something in my operating systems classes. Whenever I talk to students about fork, I teach them what fork actually does. I often present them with this problem and say, okay, now tell me what this does. So take just a second, look at it. And with your understanding of fork, the fact that fork clones processes, what is this going to do? So pause the video, try to figure it out. Don't run it, just think about it and then come back. Okay, I'm assuming you all did that. You've all thought about it. You're you know, you're feeling like you've got an idea and hopefully it occurred to you that what this is going to do is it's going to repetitively, infinitely, forever and ever clone the process. And each child process that gets cloned off is going to clone itself and you get this exponential cloning. And if you need a visual for all of this, imagine that spell that Bellatrix Lestrange put on her vault in Gringotts that basically caused everything you touch to multiply and like, you know, basically fill the whole room. Well, that's basically what this is doing, only it's filling your computer with processes. So you might even think about this as the simplest piece of malware you could ever write. I don't know, maybe somebody's got a simpler one. Please put it down in the description if you think there's a simpler way to write a piece of malware. And this is not a particularly dangerous piece of malware. All it's going to do well, it's gonna do one of two things. Either your operating system is going to detect this flurry of, cre of process creation and it's going to somehow cut it off and say, okay, you're all done. Sorry, everybody out of the pool. This is why we can't have nice things. Or your operating system is going to try to create an infinite number of processes and eventually it's going to run out of resources and your machine's gonna to grind to a halt. And admittedly, I'm a little nervous to even run this on this virtual machine, but let's see, why not? We'll just see what happens. It should be fun. Uh, if everything crashes, then I'll, we'll restart everything and I'll we'll resume recording later on. But if I come in here to example, then you're gonna see, let's see if my machine is, yeah, things are getting a little sluggish. Um, yeah, so basically I have, I have now lost. 
So that was incredibly stupid. What I meant to do was to run that fork bomb in a virtual machine. Instead, I didn't realize that I had forgotten to Vagrant SSH into the virtual machine. And so I ran it just natively on my Mac. And I basically just spent the last 20 minutes trying to get my machine back. And I finally just had to hard reset it because it just ground to a halt. So for posterity's sake, what I'm gonna do is come in here and we're just gonna put a little warning here and say, don't run this code unless you want pain and suffering. Anyway, so that's a fork bomb, folks. And like I said, fork bombs can be fun at parties, fun for impressing your friends. It might be the world's shortest malware program. And it's a good mental exercise to help you understand how fork works. But do be careful when you run it on your own machine or you might not get your machine back without a little bit of frustration. So anyway, I hope this is interesting. I hope this is illuminating. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. And until next week, I'll see you later.